Today we're going to solve a sample problem with an application of the Simulink. The problem reads as Joe the maintenance man dumps the contents of a 55 gallon drum of water into the tank process shown below. So you can see here the cylindrical tank. The entering influent has the value of volumetric flow equal to 40 gallons per minute and the discharge rate as well is equal to 40 gallons per minute. The current volume accumulation in the cylindrical tank is equal to 200 gallons of water. This is an example of a steady flow process. The vertical dimension of the tank is equal to 5 feet and the diameter of the tank is equal to 3 feet. So the qu questions read as follows. Will the tank overflow? The plot the height as f of t starting at t is equal to 0 the time of the dump. As well as plot the output flow as f of t starting at t is equal to 0 the time of the dump. Please take note that the output flow is proportional to the height of fluid in the tank. The operating equation that we're going to use in solving this problem is x of s with equation kp over ts plus 1 and the resulting will be y of s. And for liquid level processes, that's the equation that we're going to use is tau is equal to ar. As we all know, the value of tau or tau represents the time required for a steady state volume of a tank to be drained. A is going to be the area of concern for the cylindrical tank and R will be the relative change for height per volumetric flow because as we all know, per addition of a certain volu volume of liquid in the tank, there's a relative change in the height as well even if in this case there's a discharge rate as well because there's a sudden impulse. So the rate of mass flow in minus the rate of mass flow out is equal to the rate of accumulation of mass in the tank. This is the basic equation in the principle of mass, tra mass transfer. And rho Q of T minus rho of Q O T is equal to D rho A H over D T. With integration and application of Laplace transforms, we're going to come up with a final formula of H of S over Q of S is equal to R over tau S plus 1. Now, h of s represents the controlled variable. This is the change in the height. And q of s, obviously, is a disturbance in the value of the volumetric flow. Again, the value of r represents the relative change of height per volumetric flow. And tau is going to be the time required for the steady state volume of a tank to be drained. To be able to solve the problems, for example, the whether there will be an overflow in the tank as soon as the impulse will be added as well as the plotting of the graphs we have to find the value of tau and r so we're gonna use the equation tau is equal to a r tau will be equal to a substituting the value of r that will be delta h s over delta q s again delta h s represents the height and q s will be the flow rate tau then will be equal to v s over q s because as what you can see area multiplied by the height of the liquid will be then equal to the volume and we all know that 200 gallons is the initial volume of the tank or the accumulation volume in the tank even before the impulse was added and the value of the flow rate in both the entering and discharge is equal to 40 gallons per minute if you divide it that will be equal to five minutes it means that as soon as the five minutes, uh, by five by the fifth minute, the two hundred gallons will then be reached, given that there is a forty gallon per minute rate entering. R will be solved by the formula V S over A Q S, and the value of the volume is two hundred gallons, and we have to solve for the area, which is pi three feet squared multiplied by forty gallons per minute. We have to convert. 200 gallons into cubic feet and thus solving the calculations we're going to come up with the answer 0. 0.1768 foot per cubic feet per minute that's going to be with respect to the volumetric flow it means that in every volumetric flow every minute there's a relative change in the height of 0. 0.1768 feet
For an impulse of 55 gallons, which is equal to 7.352 cubic feet, we do have a volumetric flow of 7.352, right? So we, ha we can calculate for the change in the height uh, as soon as the impulse was added. Previously, we have calculated that the value of R will be equal to 0 0.1768. There will be a change of 0 0.1768 foot every volumetric flow. Therefore, we multiply that with a value of 7.352 over 5s plus 1, and we can have the value of 1.29983 over 5s plus 1. This is still with regards to the formula um, format of kp over tau s plus 1. And then we can have the value of h of s equal to 0 0.25996672 over s plus 1 fifth. This is a result of dividing this initial equation into 5 to be able to simplify the equation. The resulting equation will then, will then be h of t is equal to 0 0.25996672 e raised to the power of negative t over 5. This is because this will be the equation that we're gonna see in the Simulink application later. So now we can deal with answering the questions. The first question will be, will the tank overflow? And our answer to that is no. Why? Firstly, we have to find the initial height. And the initial height, due to the accumulation of the steady state, h is equal to 200 gallons over the area. And if you convert that to the cubic foot, a cubic feet equivalent, that will be 26.733 cubic feet over pi 3 feet square actually this is supposed to be square and h will be equal to 0.9455 feet that will be the value of the height initially due to the accumulation of 200 gallons at t is equal to zero because there's a sudden impulse of 55 gallons because joe the maintenance man added that kind of value from the drum we will have or attain a maximum change in the height happens so initially obviously at time is equal to zero as soon as that drop was uh, as soon as the, dr the, the drum was added to the cylindrical tank, we attained the maximum change in the height. But obviously, because the discharge happens as well, that maximum change will soon uh, be minimized or dwindled. Then H will be equal to 0.9455 plus HT. This value of HT will be the value of what we have been solving previously. And that is equal to 0 0.25946672e to the negative t over 5. This will be the operating equation in the with respect to the change of the height. And therefore, because this value will be equal to 1, we can have the value of h is equal to 1.205 feet. And this value is the maximum change in the height as well as the accumulation of the tank. So when 55 gallons was added, plus the initial value, the value of the change is equal, the, va the value of the height is equal to 1.205 feet. Therefore, because it's lower than the value of the tank, which is equal to, what's the value of the tank? 5 feet, the tank will not overflow. At this point, we're going to use the Simulink application already for us to be able to plot the height as f of t starting at t is equal to zero. As we could remember, we have already come up with the equation f of t is equal to 0 0.9445 plus 0 0.2599672 e to the negative t over 5. This portion of the equation represents the impulse. And this right part of the equation represents the initial accumulation of the tank. So that would be initial height based on the accumulation of the steady state flow. So you have to use a simulink to show. In order for us to be able to do that, we have to look at the height response. And we're using the pulse generator and gonna use the transfer function and the scope. In order for us to be able to plot this, we also have to look at, the, uh, we also have to assume amplitude value or percent period. And the assumed value of amplitude is equal to 10,000. Period will be equal to 100. Thus, we have to look at for the value of the percent period. So we have 55 gallons equal to 7.352 cubic feet. And the way to solve that is percent period over 100 multiplied by the value of period and the value of amplitude. We have to divide it by 100 because obviously this is a percentage value. So the percent period, using that calculation, 
will be equal to 0 0.0007352. Also, later on, we're going to be using the flow rate response. And the way to deal with this is uh, we're going to use pulse generator, transfer function, and the scope. And using the same value, again, we have to take note that this will be the values that we're going to input at the pulse generator. Amplitude equal to 10,000, period 100, and percent period 0 0.0007352. Now we have to go through the MATLAB Simulink application for us to be able to verify the rate that we have previously calculated. So this is the Simulink library browser. You have all your functions here. And I would assume that you know how to drag them here and you can use the following functions for you to be able to track the final answers. The ones that we're going to be using are, are the pulse generator transfer function and the scope. And we have, we have previously shown how to calculate for the value of the percent period that that is on how to input the data in a pulse generator so you have to click on this and try to input the data that we have previously calculated so the value of the assumed amplitude is equal to 10,000 you should not place any comma and otherwise it would you know put an error the period will be equal to 100 and the pulse width will be uh, will be or the percent period will be equal to 0 0.0007352 so again, percent of period is equal to the pulse width. That is like the addition of 7.352 feet cube. What will be its impact or the effect on the pulse or the steady state condition of the tank? So we're going to press OK and we already had the value in the pulse generator. The next thing we're going to input is the values in the transfer function. Again, the way the, equation, the operating equation of the transfer function is kp over tau s plus 1. So we have to click on it and substitute the values that we have previously used and that is equal to 0.1768 the value of denominator coefficients and that will be equal to 5s plus 1 and we have to press ok again we have to remind ourselves that we're looking for the height response and plot it from t is equal to 0 as soon as the impulse was added let's look at the addition or the effect in the graph so you have to press this and then the simulation stop time is equal to 10 so we have to press for the scope and then we have it here balance so as you can see um, if you could remember we do have this value 0.2599672 so our graph is correct <laughs> so we're looking for 0.2599 if you actually Look at that closely that will be equal to 0.2599 so our graph or our value or calculation is equal is correct and minimizing it back and then canceling it we have to look for the value value of that if we replace it with 100 and playing it the same link normalizing the values you can see that it reaches the value at time is equal to zero the value of the height will be equal to 0.2599 so at time is equal to zero actually the height of the tank is equal to 30 almost about 30 and as we all know 200 gallons is equal to 34 point something cubic feet the third question that we have to deal with is plot the output flow as f of t starting at t is equal to 0. And we have q0 of s is equal to 1 over tau s plus 1. Also, q o of s is equal to 7.352 over 5s plus 1. So this is representative of the impulse, right? Um, q o of s is equal to 1.4704 over s plus 1 fifth. This is because we divide this initial val this value into 5 so that we can simplify the equation. And then getting the inverse of the Laplace transform, we can, we can have Q o of t is equal to 1.4704 e to the negative t over 5. This will be our operating equation. And the final equation that we are going to have is Q o of actual is equal to 5.3466 feet cube plus 1.4704 e to the negative t over 5. 
because this value is re re representing the value of the impulse, which is 55 gallons added by Joe, this is going to represent as well the 200 gallons, which is the steady state accumulation at the tank. So you have to see, use the simulink, simulink to verify. The last test that we have is to plot the output flow in the cylindrical tank as soon as well, uh, including the accumulation as well as the impulse. So you can see you have to add pulse generator and the transfer function and the scope. You have to click on a pulse generator and again use the same values as we did in the past. That will be equal to the same values. So that would be clear. And then value of transfer function, we use 1 as the numerator coefficient and the value of denominator will be equal to 5. 5s plus 1. As what you can remember, 5 is the 5 minutes. 5 minute is the uh, the time required for us to be able to reach the steady state, right? Because you have 40 gallons per minute multiply uh, with 5 minutes, you can come up with 200 gallons. And that's the steady state accumulation value in the cylindrical tank. And then you have to press OK. Then play. And with a simulation, simulation stop time is equal to 10, you can click on the value of the scope. So, as expected, we have to go back to what we have calculated previously. This is the calculation for the output flow. And obviously, the effect when it comes to the impulse, 55 gallons equal to 7.352 cubic, uh, cubic feet, that will have a generation of 1.4704 e to the negative t over 5. And as what you can see in the simulink, is it reaches to that particular value of 1.4704. Even if uh, you look closely to that, and that will be it. That is right. Also, we can verify the data if we do change the simulation stop time. And that is by changing 10 to 100 so that we can look at, look at it better. So you always have to press this play button for you to be able to have the change of data recorded. And then change this, um, press the scope, and then press this one so you can look at it closely. So that will be the change in the output flow starting from obviously time offset is equal to zero starting at time is equal to zero you do have this generation of impulse of 1.5 and this will be the output as um, with regards to the accumulation of the tank so i hope that you did learn something from this problem with an application of simulink thank you for listening and see you in the next tutorials that we're going to be having